the big battle obviously has been for, I think, place kicker. What have you seen between Francis and Narvison, you know, for PATs and field goals? Yeah, um, first I'd like to say it's really a three-way competition between Connor Sally, Ray Narvison, and, and Chris Francis. Um, all three are playing at a really high level. I'm really proud of them competing. Um, you look at the numbers and it's, it's a pretty even killed race right now. What, what numbers do you look at when you're evaluating these guys? Yeah, you look at field goal percentage, you look at PAT percentage. Um, it's a comprehensive deal. Um, it's gonna take you know, the rest of camp to iron it out. Um, the numbers will not lie and, and competition breeds success. So um, we're gonna give it time and uh, we're gonna play the best guy for this football team. Is that okay with a freshman? Yes, yeah, we, I mean, we've been known to, to play several freshmen. And uh, yeah, you know, the, the unique thing about those three is um, even though Chris has had game experience, you know, doing kickoffs, um, the three of them haven't really had consistent um, on the field experience. So um, from, from that aspect, you know, they're, they're all just, you know, going to be new players. How do you create pressure situations, you know, since they don't, I mean, they've all done done it, but they've never done it, like you said, in a, maybe even the moment, Big 12 game. Yeah. Um, you know, today, for example, at the end of practice just now, um, Coach Campbell called up all three kickers from 45 yards into the wind, and they all went three for three. Um, yesterday at the beginning of uh, practice um, in team, we did a uh, situation where um, it was uh, third and long, like right around the 30-yard line, and all three times, you know, all three kickers went, 47 yards, 47 yards, 47 yards. So, um, you know, really proud of them. Um, they've been competing their, their butts off. Um, I love their focus. Um, they're all really competitive and they're all really good. Ideally, does a guy do place kicking and, um, and kickoffs or do you find split that up yeah. depending on what the situation is with those guys? Yeah, um, I do believe in specialization. Um, if you look across the landscape of college football, the best kickoff kickers struggle with field goals and the best field goal kickers struggle with kickoffs so there is correlation between specialization in uh in those roles um in in the past that's what we've done the last two years and, and we did that at, at toledo too so um yeah it, it's just it's kind of a unique thing with different styles of kicking you know power swing versus an accurate swing i know you said you see it going through the rest of fall camp but is that something that when camp is over you want to know going into that week who it's going to be or yeah yeah the there there will be um you know that there will be a name starter absolutely um we're not going to leave this up for like one of those tryouts on game day kind of a deal mm -hmm. um we're going to let the numbers play out we're going to let you know trust our our practice numbers and um then we will we'll for sure name a starter when when us and the head coach is ready how will the kickoff rule change the game yeah it's really interesting um i think it's going to be one of the ultimate copycat deals you know the guy who comes up with the best idea is going to put it on tape week one or week two and then you're going to see a lot of teams copycat that guy um i think it, in terms of both kickoff and kickoff return you have to look at it differently um you know without getting too much into schematics um you got to be sharp and especially in, in 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 terms of you know being on return and communication um you're going to see a lot more squibs and pooches and sky kicks where guys that normally wouldn't field the ball you're going to try and kick them the ball so that you're not giving the, the returner the football and you're going to try and secure those touchbacks and fair catches. Um, I think it'll impact the game more than we think. For you guys with Kane, yeah. do you think that can especially be a, a weapon for you guys in that scenario then? Yeah, Kane, um, he's very gifted. You know, we all know how fast he can be. Um, having him, you know, obviously we lost him last year to injury and having him back this year um, is going to be a tremendous help for our football team. What he does back there is, is really dynamic. Um, he's explosive, and we all know that just because his proven record of, of being a top guy in the Big 12 in 2016. So um, we're going to find ways to have him back there and, and really build more of a speed package back there with, with guys more athletic and guys that can field balls rather than a bigger, heavier set big skill guy. Is it black and white what you're going to do? Uh, what Kane's going to do or whomever catches the ball. Is it black and white? I mean, you get it outside the – or inside the 25-yard the line or 25-yard line or closer, you're fair catching under whatever. Yeah. Um, it, as much as we'd like to make it black and white, you know, there's always shades of gray in football. Um, 
there's a lot of variables that go into it. Score of the game, wind, um, you know, even for example, like just looking in the sun, you know, and, and strength of the opposing team's kicker. Um, as much as we, we will try and make it objective, it's always going to be somewhat of a subjective deal in terms of hang time of the ball, wind, you know, there's so many variables, but that, that's more of a game plan to game plan. So he will, nobody will have the exclusive green light to do whatever you want to do? No, no. <laughs> it, it won't be a, uh, an exclusive green light. Yeah. Our guys are going to be trained and, and they're going to execute with, with great detail and, and understand that, that coaching is everything. So whatever we coach them to do, yeah, they're, they're going to have to follow by those rules, and especially with this new rule. You know, if, if you were to receive a ball on the goal line okay, last year and return it to the 25-yard line, you'd be top 10 in the country. Right. So the rule is going to be more um, shifted towards encouraging fair catches and touchbacks. Well, another thing, too, is like, okay, let's say you fair catch the ball, all right, and your returner drops it. Well, that's like a muffed punt. You cannot advance a fair catch kickoff return. So if he catches, if he weighs fair catch and drops the ball, that ball's spotted right at wherever he, he recovered the ball. So I think that, you know, looking from that perspective too, like that's risky in my opinion as well. You know, um, it, it's, we're going to have to <laughs> play it out and kind of, it's going to be a game by game kind of a deal. When we talked to you in the spring, I think in regards to Corey Dunn, you talked about his versatility or some of the yeah. things he can do. What, how does that apply to a punter and, and I guess not showing all your cards and stuff with it, but how, how do you kind of feel like you could use him or what he provides? Yeah, um, the thing Corey does really well is he's really accurate. Um, growing up playing Australian rules football, he can place balls with tremendous accuracy. Um, he, it almost looks like someone threw the football. Um, he is that accurate and through drill training and constant practice. I mean, we do punt every day. Um, we've been kicking field goals every day and we punt every day and we're finding ways to challenge him and maximizing his full potential. But yeah, what he does is really impressive and he's really dynamic. Is it like the Madden things where you try to hit it in the zones? <laughs> I, I, I've never played Madden, so I'm not sure. <laughs> but if it's old school, like uh, the coffin corner deal, yeah, it is. that is that is a lot like what he can do um, from various parts of the field. With the punt returners, uh, is that pool narrowed down at all? Or is it still? Yeah. Um, yeah sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, no. With the punt returners, is that pool you know, cut down at all? I know Coach Campus, there's like six guys. Yeah, there is there is six guys in the loop. You're looking at uh, DeAndre Payne, Brian Peavy, uh, Lawrence White, Tariq Milton, uh, Deshante Jones. Um, those, those guys pretty much can all do a really good job back there. Yeah.